During the war, German aviation engineers proposed a large number of different aircraft designs. These range from more or less orthodox designs to hopelessly overcomplicated, radical, or even impractical ones. One such project was a private venture of Fokker Wolf, generally known as the Triebflugel. The aircraft was to use a rotary wing design in order to give it the necessary lift. Given the late start of the project in 1944 and the worsening war situation for Germany, the aircraft would never leave the drawing board and would remain only a proposal. Welcome to a new Plane Encyclopedia voice article. I'm Stan and we know all the channels out there on YouTube ask you to like, subscribe and hit that bell button, but I'm not going to. While those things would definitely help us, what I would like you all to do is leave us some feedback in the comments, tell us what you think about our videos, and let us know what other aircraft you would like us to cover. Looking forward to see your responses and now let's get back to the Triebflugel. During the war, the Luftwaffe possessed some of the best aircraft designs and technology of the time. While huge investments and major advancements were made in piston engine aircraft development, there was also interest in newer and more exotic technologies that were also being developed at the time, such as rocket and jet propulsion. As an alternative to standard piston engine aircraft, the Germans began developing jet and rocket engines which enabled them to build and put to use more advanced aircraft powered by these. These were used in small numbers and far too late to have any real impact on the war though. It is generally less known that they also showed interest in the development of ramjet engines. Ramjets are basically modified jet engines which have a specially designed front nozzle. The role of this nozzle is to help compress air which would be mixed with fuel to create thrust but without an actual or centrifugal compressor. While this is at least in theory much simpler to build than a standard jet engine, it cannot function during takeoff. Thus an auxiliary power plant is needed. It should however be noted that this was not new technology and in fact had existed since 1913 when a French engineer by the name of René Laurent patented such an engine. Due to a lack of necessary materials, it was not possible to build a fully operational prototype at that time, and it would take decades before a properly built ramjet could be completed. In Germany, work on such engines was mostly carried out by Helmut Walter during the 1930s. While his initial work was promising, he eventually gave up on its development and switched to a rocket engine instead. The first working prototype was built and tested by the German Research Center for Gliding during 1942. The first working prototype was tested by mounting an engine on a Dornier Do 17 and later a Do 217. The Focke Wolf company, ever keen on new technology, showed interest in ramjet development during 1941. Two years later, Fokker Wolf set up a new research station at Bad Ailsen with the aim of improving already existing ramjet engines. The project was undertaken under the supervision of Otto Ernst Pabst. The initial work looked promising as the ramjets could be made much cheaper than jet engines and could offer excellent overall flying performance. For this reason, Focke Wolf initiated the development of fighter aircraft designs to be equipped with this engine. Two of these designs were the Stralrohrjäger and the Triebflugel. The Stralrohr had a more conventional design, although using the word conventional in this project has a loose meaning at best. However, in the case of the Triebflugel, all known and traditional aircraft design theory was, in essence, thrown out the window. It was intended to take off vertically and initially be powered by an auxiliary engine. Upon reaching sufficient height, three ramjets on the tips of the three wings would power up and rotate the entire wing assembly. It was hoped that by using cheaper materials and low-grade fuel, the Triebflugel could be easily mass-produced. 
Given that these ramjet powered fighter projects were more of a private venture than a specially requested military design, they were not given any standard Luftwaffe designation. The Triebflugel Flugzeug name, depending on the sources, can be translated as power wing, gliding or even as trust wing aircraft. This video will refer to it as the Triebflugel for the sake of simplicity. Given that the Triebflugel never left the drawing board, not much is known about its overall characteristics. It was designed as an all-metal, vertical takeoff rotary wing fighter aircraft. In regard to the fuselage, there is little to almost no information about its overall construction. Based on the available drawings of it, it would have been divided into several different sections. The front nose section consisted of the pilot, the cockpit and an armament section for cannons and ammunition, which were placed behind the pilot. Approximately at the center of the aircraft, a rotary collar was placed around that section of the fuselage. Behind it, the main storage for fuel would be located. At the end of the fuselage, four tail fins were placed. This aircraft was to have an unusual and radical free wing design. The wings were connected to the fuselage while small ramjets were placed on their tips. Thanks to the rotary collar, the wings were able to rotate a full 360 degrees around the fuselage. Their pitch could be adjusted depending on the flight situation. For additional stability during flight, the tail fins had trailing edges installed. The pilot would control the flying speed of the aircraft by changing the pitch. Once sufficient speed was achieved, some 240 to 320 km per hour, the free ramjets were to be activated. The total diameter of the rotary wings was 11.5 meters and they had an area of 16.5 meters square. This unusual aircraft was to be powered by three ramjets which were able to deliver 840 kilograms of thrust each. Thanks to ramjet development achieved by Otto Pops, these had a diameter of 68 centimeters with a length of less than 30 centimeters. The fuel for this aircraft was to be hydrogen gas or some other low-grade fuel. The estimated maximum speed that could be achieved with these engines was 1000 km per hour, hopefully. The main disadvantage of the ramjets, however, was that they could not be used during takeoff, so an auxiliary engine had to be used instead. While not specifying the precise type, at least three different engines, including a jet one, a rocket one, and an ordinary piston one, were proposed. In the nose, the pilot cockpit was placed. From there, the pilot was provided with an overall good view of the surroundings. The main issue with this cockpit design was the insufficient rear view which was really needed during vertical landing. The landing gear consisted of four smaller and one larger wheel. Smaller wheels were placed on the four fin stabilizers while the large one was placed in the middle of the rear part of the fuselage. The large center position wheel was meant to hold the whole weight of the aircraft while the smaller ones were meant to provide stability. Each wheel was enclosed in a protective ball-shaped cover that would be closed during flight, possibly to provide better aerodynamic properties. It may also have served to protect the wheels from any potential damage as landing without one of these would have been quite problematic. Interestingly enough, all five landing wheels were retractable despite their really odd positioning. The armament would have consisted of two 3cm Machine Canona 103s with 100 rounds of ammunition and two 2cm MG 151s with 250 rounds. The cannons were placed on the side of the aircraft's nose. The spare ammunition containers were positioned behind the pilot's seat. Despite its futuristic appearance and the alleged cheap building materials that would have been used in its construction, no Triebflugel was ever built. A small wooden wind tunnel model was built and tested by the end of the war. During this testing, it was noted that the aircraft could potentially reach speeds up to 0.9 Mach, slightly less than 1000 km per hour. The documents for this aircraft were captured by the Americans at the end of the war. 
The Americans initially showed interest in the concept and continued experimenting and developing it for some time after. Now, an interesting bit of modern trivia is that the Triebflugel was used as an escape aircraft for the Red Skull villain in the 2011 Captain America The First Avenger movie. The Triebflugel's overall design was unusual to say the least. It was a completely new concept of how to bring an aircraft to the sky. On paper, and according to Fokker Wolf's engineers that were interrogated by Allied intelligence after the war, the Triebflugel offered a number of advantages over more orthodox designs. The whole aircraft was to be built using cheap materials, could achieve great speeds, and did not need a large airfield for takeoff, among others. In reality, this aircraft would have been simply too complicated to build and use at that time. For example, the pilot could only effectively control the aircraft if the whole rotary wing system worked perfectly. If one or more of the ramjets failed to work properly, the pilot would most likely have to bail out, as he would not have any sort of control over the aircraft, and bailing out with the rotary wing going behind you is uh, not the nicest perspective. The landing process was also most likely very dangerous, especially given the lack of rear view and the uncomfortable and difficult position that the pilot needed to be in in order to be able to see the rear part of the aircraft. The main question regarding the overall Triebflugel design is if it would have been capable of successfully performing any kind of flight. Especially given its radical, untested and overcomplicated design, this was a big question mark. While there exist some rough estimations of its alleged flight performances, it is also quite dubious if these could be achieved in reality. The whole Triebflugel project never really gained any real interest from the Luftwaffe, and it is highly likely that it was never presented to them. It was most probably only a Fokker Wolf private venture. And that was all. If you liked this video, you can check the full article in the description, there's the link in there. And otherwise, please do remember to give us your feedback in the comments, we'd love to hear it. You can also find us on most common social media, and we're always looking for people to join us uh, as writers or script editors or whatever you think you could contribute to the project. We also accept donations if you would be so kind to send any, and those would be used for the illustrations that accompany each of our articles. Until next time, keep us in your sights.